today we are going to be going over how to build your own fire suppression or fire prevention system that goes on the rooftop of your house. Um, I'm up here in Northern California and we are constantly looking for ways to uh, fire harden our homes. Um, and, uh, and this is one of the ways I've been inspired by one of my friends who lives in the deep forest and he built his own uh, fire um, prevention system on his house. And uh, I wanted to do one on mine and I've been looking at some of the videos online on YouTube and there's a lot of good stuff out there and I've taken a lot of ideas from what I've seen uh, from my friend and what I've seen online and kind of put them together. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and build this thing and I wanted to take you along with me. All right, let's check it out. So there are a lot of other things that you can do um, before you even get to the point of uh, wanting to put a sprinkler system on the roof of your house. Um, for one, all the um, vents that go into the crawl space um, and then also um, up in your bird blocks, um, the venting for your attic, that can all be retrofitted with um, the correct size venting, which won't allow embers um, to get up into those uh, spaces, which can really um, accelerate any kind of fire danger that you have um, with your home. Um, you can, as you can see, I have some branches that are getting pretty close to the house. Uh, you can trim all of those back. Um, I want to get at least six to eight feet away. Um, I know defensible space is a really big thing. Um, these trees provide us a lot of shade in the summertime, and so we're not totally willing to take them out all the way. Uh, but we do want to make sure that they aren't uh, coming over or getting close to the house. Um, the other thing that you can do is um, going looking at your gutter system and just making sure you keep it clean of all uh, dead leaves or uh, leaf matter or any pollen or anything like that. Um, that is often an ignition source um, for fires. Uh, um, em embers getting down in there and igniting. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure you keep those clean. Um, and then if you do all of those things and you're still looking for additional ways to fire harden your home, um, then the sprinkler system is the way to go. So for my particular system, I've decided to use uh, three sprinkler heads and I've wanted to go with a brass sprinkler head. This is an Orbit, um, Rainbird makes these too. This is about $20. I wanted to go with brass because obviously this is gonna hold up to the elements uh, a lot better than maybe a plastic uh, sprinkler head, which they also make as well. Um, so I'm gonna go with three of these and then I'm using copper. Uh, tubing up there is that's gonna withstand the elements uh, in any um, heat that's going on up there if it gets warm obviously a, a hose might melt uh, but the copper is gonna last a bit longer than that um, here's a coupling that'll just thread right through there that'll get soldered and then the T and then the copper pipe here is my form for the rooftop sprinkler um, so I made this so it can, I can take this apart. Uh, anyways, the idea is um, the concrete goes in here. Um, that is the correct roof pitch. Um, and then when I take the form apart, uh, this PVC pipe stays in there and I can run the copper uh, through that. Um, and it will have kind of a V out of the bottom of it. Um, so that it'll set right on top of my ridge top and kind of lock into place up there. And I'm also going to put some mesh in here. I went ahead and utilized the idea from someone else on YouTube that has a, a nice video of uh, their fire suppression system. Uh, and they uh, built these um, concrete um, kind of uh, retainers for the top of the roof um, for the ridge cap. Um, so you can see um, I cast these, um, I built a little form, um, and this is actually the roof pitch. Um, I've got a 512 roof pitch. So this, if you imagine uh, sitting like this on top of the roof pitch and the copper pipe going through there, um, and these kind of lock into place and hold everything in place. They're obviously weatherproof. Um, I'll paint them with some concrete paint. Um, here's what the mold looks like. Um, and uh, just kind of fabricated this uh, out of some OSB scraps, uh, plywood that I had. Um, this is what it's gonna look like before I pour the concrete in. I've just th I threw some wire in there, just kind of hold everything together. 
Um, this is a one inch um, uh, metal, or I'm sorry, electrical conduit, uh, PVC electrical conduit. Um, so that's weatherproof as well. That pops in there and the concrete goes, flows around that and kind of locks everything into place. Um, and then this is screwed together. So after I let this dry for about a day, um, and then I'll, I'll um, take this apart and, uh, and then you'll, uh, you'll see what it looks like. Uh, this, I, I made this um, seven by 16 by eight. Um, so that's about the size of it. You could go bigger or smaller depending on what your needs are. Um, this weighs, uh, the finished re uh, retainer weighs about 40 pounds. So just keep that in mind um, uh, as you, uh, if you decide you wanna go this route. We made this concrete uh, kind of a wet mix because I really wanted to flow nicely in here and I didn't want any air bubbles uh, because that definitely creates a weak spot in your pour, in your mold. Uh, so, pretty close here on my mix, I just kind of guessed. Um, I was getting 80 pound bags and it was taking pretty much exactly half of that, so about 40 pounds. Um, and then one really important thing to keep in mind after you pour that concrete in, it's really, uh, really crucial that you take and you tap it all the way around because what that does is it helps to settle uh, that concrete and eliminate any air gaps in there, which you don't want. It's like I said, that creates a weak spot in your mold, in your casting. So go around, gently tap it, fill it in as needed. And um, you can take a trowel um, and kind of trowel off the top, depending on how how nice you want the top to look. Um, you can make it look really nice if you want, or mine are just going to be kind of rough. Um, so I've waited 24 hours uh, for this to dry, and I'm going to pop this off um, and see if I can persuade this guy to come out and you're going to want to be gentle if you can because you want your you want this guy to stay intact you don't want to uh, beat on the concrete too hard because it's not 100% set up uh, so you definitely want to be gentle and then you're probably going to want to use your your form over again unless this is your last block which I'm getting close to but I still I think I'm gonna build one more so I'm gonna be gentle with this as I take it out and try and preserve it as much as possible just want to get this down the side and start working it gently. And see if I can get this thing free. Yep, there it comes. completed all five of my ridge top um, sprinkler system placeholders and for lack of a better term I'm not, not sure what to call these guys but um, they are ready to go up on the roof uh, I did put some concrete paint on them because uh, concrete will break down uh, when exposed to the elements over time um, the sun and the water uh, and freezing and everything, it'll, it'll end up breaking down these concrete blocks. So I went ahead and found some old porch paint that I had that's made for um, concrete and uh, put that on there and I'm just letting them dry now.
So there's the ridge line of the house that I'm going to be placing sprinklers on. I'm going to do one there, one a little bit further down, and then one, there's a step down into the front of the house uh, with a lower ridge. Uh, so I'll have three all together. Um, and then the idea is that it's not only getting the roof wet, but the trees, um, anything on the ground, anything up front, anything around the house, the neighbor's house, uh, everything's going to get totally, hopefully, totally drenched um, and just kind of change the uh, microclimate around this house. I've got this roof mount in place. I'm really happy with the way it sits on here. Um, the roof pitch lines up and so it's really locked into place, especially with the weight of it. Um, so I've got these kind of evenly spaced out on my ridge top and then following down uh, just two more down there. Um, so now I'll be placing the copper pipe or just kind of dry fitting that, getting that uh, where I want it. Uh, I'll have two sprinkler heads up here on this higher ridge top and then one more kind of right in the middle down there or maybe towards that uh, that end block. All right, friends, I've just about completed this whole system. Got everything kind of connected, running along the roof line or the ridge line. Um, had to get a little creative with a few of the, few of the things, but um, this is looking like it's pretty close to the testing phase. Um, got the three heads installed and uh, just a couple things to keep in mind uh, anytime you're attaching copper to anything you want to use copper um, attachments not iron or steel because it will um, begin to quickly corrode um, as the two metals kind of interact with each other uh, last piece that i need to connect right there to the hose uh, and then i'll be able to fire this thing up and see what we're looking at. Go ahead and fire this thing up. We have no idea how much water is going to be shooting out of here. Uh, we have no idea if we're going to be running for our lives. I have no idea. The, I, hopefully there's going to be a lot of water shooting everywhere. Um, always remember safety first, wear your flip flops up on the roof uh, and uh, let's see how this thing goes. It wasn't allowing the pressure to build up. So let's, let's try it. You want to turn it on? See, uh, see if it works this time. I'm hoping I get really wet right here. Come on, baby. Are we turn on more? Yeah, there we go. It's building up pressure now. Oh! Yeah, turn it up. Okay. It needs all the pressure uh, you got. All the way. Sasha, the, the cat doesn't like it. <laughs> Alright. This is looking good. It's, getting, it's definitely getting the entire roof. I want it to go a little bit further, so I might be able to adjust that out. I've, I've been able to adjust the arc on those. They're fully adjustable, which is pretty cool. And um, you can basically thread the little um, the screw in. It's, operational with your with your fingers screw it in or out for uh, more spray um, and then there's a little angle uh, deflector that allows you to kind of control how far what kind of radius you got right now I have probably a 30 foot radius uh, coming off which goes out into the trees uh, over to the neighbor's property it's hitting this garage here hitting everything out here uh, so I'm really happy with the coverage at this point um, is looking really good. This is a, a weak spot right here. It looks like this needs to be tightened up. Um, once I get that tightened up, I'll increase my pressure up top there a little bit. Um, but this is how I ended up connecting. I just ran it down here, connected to the hose. Uh, it's just on a hose bib. This needs to be turned on and off manually, uh, but I did get another device which is gonna allow me to uh, turn this thing on and off remotely uh, which here's another view from down below got a good amount of coverage from that spray from 
those two sprinkler heads, and then I've got another one in the front. Here's the head in the front, um, giving me some good um, coverage out into the front yard. It's uh, spraying out there quite a bit, which is nice because I've got a wood pile over here that I wouldn't mind uh, if that gets wet in the summertime uh, during uh, fire danger or fire threat. And you can see the ground is pretty much soaked down here, which is good. Here's the last piece of the puzzle that I'll start working on. Um, and this is gonna allow me to turn the whole system on remotely if, uh, if we aren't at home. So I'll update this video in the comment section on how this thing works um, and if it's successful. So a few weeks ago, um, we had a family friend over um, and he's actually, he works for a local fire department and he was nice enough to kind of walk around the house uh, with me and just kind of note different things that I might, might want to be aware of. Some of them I, I already talked about earlier in this video, um, but <clears throat> one of the things he said was, uh, the best advice I can give you is get good fire insurance and get out early um, if there's fire coming. And, um, and I thought, wow, that's, that's actually really good advice um, for most people. But there's a lot of people that either can't get fire insurance uh, because uh, people want, uh, the um, companies won't insure them if they live out in um, high fire hazard areas. Uh, maybe they can't afford it. Um, whatever the reason is, uh, not everybody can get really good fire insurance. So something like this, this system, uh, can really help uh, with, um, you know, Get, taking down uh, the the danger to your home burning up at least a little bit um, but there's a lot of things that we can do just kind of changing our mindset living in this uh, in this world which from when I was a kid um, these these fires were nowhere near this intense um, or dangerous um, so obviously things are changing we need to change with it uh, our mindset um, whether it's throwing a shovel in the trunk of our car uh, with a, a good um, industrial strength fire extinguisher in case we come across something that's small or little things that we can do to fire harden our home. Um, lots of stuff uh, that we can do to kind of, uh, you know, take, take that danger down a little bit. Um, so anyways, that's gonna be my video for today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please, if you have ideas or, or uh, different things that you wanna, um, you know, uh, any kind of feedback or, um, constructive criticism, um, ideas, ways that, that this could be better, um, please put it in the comments down below. Let's share our, our thoughts. Let's share our ideas. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what you have to say. Um, hit the like button. Um, share it with your friends. Um, and uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Um, I know I had fun um, kind of creating this system. Um, and uh, it's just kind of a, it's another peace of mind thing uh, that uh, it's nice to hear that that water falling through the leaves of the trees uh, when we have this system on. Anyways, um, we'll see you next time. Aloha, mahalo for watching.